Hello everybody, welcome back to Excel 10 Minute Leaders Live. My name is Graham Brown. Now we talk about leadership a lot here, business, technology, society. But what underpins great leaders? Well, one of the most important skills that we're going to learn about in the next 10 minutes is storytelling, business storytelling. Leadership is storytelling and storytelling is leadership to help us understand that better. Joined by Dennis Morrison. Dennis, welcome to the show. Thanks, Graham. Great to be on your show. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes together. Not a lot of time to talk about business storytelling and what you do, but we can start. We can start the first chapter. <laughs> so are you ready? I am ready. Let's do this then. So by way of introduction, you don't have a business card. I don't know that much. But if you did have one, Dennis, what would it say on it? Um, I inspire, I empower, and I guide. That's what it said. That's what it would say. Who? Who do you do all of these things for? I help small businesses, coaches, consultants, um, service providers communicate better on an emotional level using the power of storytelling. And it's not just storytelling, but that's the medium in which they engage to attract their ideal audience to them. So they become the audience magnet. Hmm. What's the problem? Why do they need these skills? Well, well as I a think business owner, it comes naturally. Well, many things should come naturally, but they don't. Um, like anything, storytelling is a skin and a craft that can be learned. But one of the biggest problems uh, people are facing is how do I get noticed in this sea of noise? How can I stand out and, you know, not be like everyone else? And it's been proven that storytelling, but more importantly, I like to call it purposeful storytelling. Um, allows you to bring yourself to the table. It's not about copying someone else. It's not like being like someone else. It's like, how can you be quintessentially you, yourself, as your friends will call you, yet bring value to your audience? And mm. the power of storytelling, when done right, allows you to shine. Because the reality is, in business, you only want to attract your ideal audience. You want people who don't resonate you to step by the wayside. You don't want time wasters. You want people who see that you can be their guide to help them in whatever problem that you help people solve. Hmm. And when you say to people that you help them with storytelling or purposeful storytelling, what are the things that people commonly get wrong about that when they hear storytelling? They think, ah, oh, it's like this, the expectation. Okay, many things. Um, firstly, that they think it's just about storytelling. No, it's part of a process. It's about understanding who's my ideal audience, my avatar, what are the problems they're facing? Why should they come to me? What am I offering? What makes me worthy to be their guide? And then it's about, I'd, I'd say I'm a bit contrarian to a lot of other people because most people say, tell your story and that's all you need to do. No, storytelling is a mean of communication. Yep. So it's about infusing storytelling and how you communicate. And then we're tying, I like to say storytelling and copywriting are like cousins. So we're blending both of those and we're having reasons or call to actions for people to go to the next stage with you. Now, mm. the thing as well is it's not about one story. People are at different stages with you on their journey with you. So each of these stages need different types of stories in order to get them and bring them in. So they connect with you on an emotional level and they want to see what's the next steps. Hmm. What does a good story then actually do for a small business? What are those tangible outcomes that come from telling a good story? It depends how you look at it. I, I, see, I call it purposeful storytelling because it's not just about telling a good story. It's the reason why you're telling the story. Who are you looking to help? The tangible benefits, oh, wow, there could be many. First and foremost, as I said earlier, is attracting your ideal audience. Secondly, it's engaging them on an emotional level yeah? because we know that people make decisions on emotion then use their logic to justify it. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, you, when you tell a story, when done right, the listener feels that they are the person, the protagonist, in the story. So it's really understanding these elements and infusing it in how you communicate. 
And like anything, when someone doesn't know you, it's a slightly different story to if someone knows you a bit more, which is a slightly different story when someone's very close to knowing you. And then when someone's in your world and you start transforming them, you continue to use the art of storytelling to keep them gripped and want to know more and go further in their own journey as they are creating their own stories that they can relate to others within your world and within their own world. So... I'm sure the audience, myself included, want to know a bit more about you and how you came to this stage of doing what you're doing and helping people in this way. If I give you an assignment, Dennis, how would you deal with this? You're going to write a script for a movie for your own life. Describe the opening scene. Now, I think the, the key here is to inform the audience that to tell a story, you don't do it chronologically. You don't say, well, I was born, scene one, chapter two, this happened, I went to school. You've got to work it so using your storytelling skills help us learn a little bit about you okay hey nice little challenge so as i approach the train to get on the eurostar to go to france this is pre you know pre credit cards i was walking to the train station and suddenly the phone slipped out my hand and looped and did a circle landed on the floor my phone was broken I was heading to France, no way to contact anyone. It was 10 p.m. at night. I was staying with someone and I didn't have their number with me. It was in the phone. I didn't have any credit cards. And you know what? I had no French francs. What did I do? That's the start. What did you do, Dennis? Aha, uh -huh, that's, that's, that's what people, we don't have time to go into it there. But that will be the start. You know, the start mm. is we, a great idea with stories. If we don't start at the beginning, we start within some action to bring mm. people in. Then they want to know more. Now, there's many ways I could craft this story. And by the way, it's a true story. Yeah, but there's many ways that could be crafted. I could just tell it as an entertainment factor. I could use certain things that happen that could be business lessons for my ideal audience or things that I learned along the way. So we're looking at things that happen in our life that we're thinking, what could be a lesson here that could enable my audience to learn more about me to see how I can help them, guide them, or my service or offering is the solution that they're looking for to help them alleviate the pain they may go through. They may be going through, sorry. Mm. And how would you deal with the common objective that people may say, oh, my story is not worthy of telling or my story isn't worthy of public audience? There seems to be a lot of doubt, doesn't there? And it seems to be amplified a bit by media Mm -hmm. that therefore you know it gives prominence to celebrities and these improbable lives that they live and i'm just little old me doing my thing why should i tell a story why should i think about storytelling well first and foremost hey most of our stories aren't that exciting that's a reality. Come on, I'm going to get real here. You know, we hear stories about the hero's journey and we see these epic things, these massive transformations. We're like, well, I didn't have that. Yeah, I had food on my plate. I had some good education. Yeah, I had loving parents. Where do I fit in? So I'd say not that by the wayside. What are the lessons that you've learned? What are the little anecdotes that you've had? Build your own story library. And then the art is what are the lessons within that? So they don't need to be epic. Um, it's not about your story. When you're talking about telling stories, it's about the listener or the viewer, the audience. It's not about you. It's mm. about them. The minute you realize that, then suddenly storytelling's fun. And then when we add purpose to our stories, because we have businesses and of course we want our business to grow. And of course we kind of want a life that gives us more freedom. It doesn't mean working more. It means having more freedom. Then we infuse that purpose in our stories that can help us like a brick by brick, build the foundations and the building that we design. Hmm. Okay. Dennis, you got, I'm going to give you two minutes a stage to give us the outline if you will the very first part of your ted talk so i'm inviting you to ted to go on stage and deliver well i think they're about 12 minutes in reality but this one <laughs> is going to be two minutes it's the condensed ted ted wow. express okay on the spot or what, what would you talk about yeah what would you talk about and how would you talk about it so the two minutes you're invited to ted to present what are you going to talk about and give us a brief synopsis of it 
Okay, so if I was on TED, I would firstly talk about some losses that I had, some challenges, some things that didn't work out, the business that failed where I put my whole heart into it. That will get people to understand that, hey, I'm not standing there being this, I'm Superman, I can do this or that. I'm just like you. I've had challenges. I've had things that not work. But then I will show the lessons I learned and how I was able to use those challenges that I had to build me to where I am now and how you can do that. Now, because I'm talking about storytelling, I'm going to infuse stories in it, but my outcome would be why you should start communicating more with the stories and how you can do it on any medium. That's the beauty of storytelling. You're not stuck to a medium. It could be video, it could be audio, it could be little short posts, it could be ads. And how, by using stories, people pay attention and how when we change the volume or the intensity of how we communicate, we can hold people's attention. And then I will tell the audience that, yes, you can do this too. That's it. Dennis Morrison, everybody. Dennis, where do we find out more about you? Okay. Um, Easily, um, the um, audiencemagnet.com is the main website, but I've got a special gift for all you listeners. It's at theaudiencemagnet.com forward slash XL podcast. That's all one word. And that is the four types of storytelling with 60 different ways that you can tell your story in different mediums. And if you decide to take this free gift, you'll also get access for free a five-day mini course called Sell With Story. And I like to say five days to determine your next 12 months. Plus you can get me on social, Dennis Morrison, wherever you like. LinkedIn's probably the best for me. There you go, folks. The call out, Dennis Morrison. Thank you for joining us today. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.